Ku Klux Klan Christmas, a Christmas with multicolored lights instead of the damn Jew white Hanukkah light bushes that we've got in the department stores. And Clan of Claws will be here to give all the good Klansmen some real nice stocking stuffers and lump the coal for the little nigger kids because we're having a white Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to the show. You know, the holidays are drawing near and all around us. People of all races are getting ready to celebrate their particular holidays. But as you just saw in our video clip, there are some groups out there that don't share the same Christmas wishes of peace and goodwill toward man that most of us strive toward. Now, today we're going to spend a Christmas with the Ku Klux Klan. In fact... In fact, we spent some time in the home of a Klan member, and we have some exclusive videotape of that celebration. It is pretty difficult to watch, but it's probably worth watching. Take a look at a preview. It is open now with pride and no fear. Your traitors have had it. The Klan is now here. No Klan Christmas party would be complete without these adorable little hooded Klansmen gingerbread cookies. Over here, we've got a beautiful... Clan blood drop patch cake from the exalted cyclops of Okeechobee, Florida. There is no more sacred holiday in, holiday in Christianity than Christmas. Um, this is an important show, though, because what these people are doing here is taking them to this most sacred of holidays and uh, perverting it, and basically teaching their children exactly the opposite message of not just Christianity, but Judaism and Muslim and all the religions that care about each other. Okay. My first guest is a member of the Klan, and he's here to tell us how he wants to celebrate the holidays. Here he is. What is it, uh, who do you think you are? I'm Clan Clans from the South Pole. Okay. I got a bag of goodies for all these people here, yeah. especially with the niggas. Hey. Here Here's the rule. Here's the rule. Here's the rule. Here's the rule. You are entitled, as any other citizen, to be on this show. But here's the rule you and I are going to make, okay? Right. I'm not asking you to like me anything. You All can right. hate me as much as you want. But for the remainder of this show, you will not use that term again, okay? <laughs> you will not use that term again. Okay? That's the rule. First of all, the swastika there, the foul language that you're using. First, let me say, before you say anything else, let me say to anybody watching at home, any child watching at home, this is not... Santa Claus, okay? Have a seat. Okay. Hey, Jerry, we're not, we're not there. Look, I even got something for you here. I got to bring it up there. Clan Claus. Yeah? Uh, a nice cake, Clan yeah. Claus. Well, you better play with your toys, because that's about all you're going to have to play with. Oh, uh, You know, okay, uh, here's the thing. I'm not going to spend the whole just going back and forth with you, but here's what's scary about you. I understand you are what you are, and this is a big country, and even people like you are permitted in it. Oh. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. The problem is that in the green room, uh -huh. you have a wife and a child. This young child of yours is six years old, and what That's is right. scary... Now, I'll tell you what. I did not want the child out here, okay? Because I don't want the child in this kind of a situation, but I want you to meet the child. So we have a camera in the green room, and there, there you can see... And his name, the boy's name is Michael, and mom's name... Well, you can see he's playing with this porch monkey right there. Uh, 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 mom, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Jerry. Okay, uh, here's what we find disturbing. Um, you are an adult, and you are entitled to your views. Now, I may hate with every fiber in me the views that you have, but I understand you're allowed to have them. Here's what I don't understand. You have a little child there. Six years ago when your son was born, your son had no hate in his heart. Your son had no prejudice in his heart. Your son had no bigotry in his heart. You are teaching your son to hate. Oh, wait a minute. Now.
All right, okay. Why did you join the Klan? Seriously. Why? You have no joking right now. Why did you, at some point, you decided you were going to join the Klan? Yeah, Klan. I joined the Klan. Uh, talking about my six-year-old son, he used to go to school all the yeah, and before he, oh, he used to be at white boys' school, all right? Yeah. Now that all these blacks come in, okay, he's using and picked up language, excuse the black me, I, language. Well, what, excuse me, what difference does it make what the race is if someone's going to school? I thought you want everyone to go to school. Hey, hey, I want to tell you something, Jerry. <laughs> I gotta got tell you something, they ruined their own neighborhood, so now they come to the white boys' neighborhood no. and they ruined theirs. Right. Michael, can you hear me? Say yes. yes. What does Christmas mean to you? Uh, I don't know. Okay, okay. What? <laughs> He's not gonna say. He's too hyper right now. First of all, my yeah, son has ADD. Oh, Mikey, show him what you got in your hand. Show him what you got in your hand. Okay. Dad! Dad! Uh, I'm going to keep it on. I'm sorry. I can't let them keep something on. Okay, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Mom, listen to me. Yeah. Uh, I've done this show for five years. And I admit I have had all kinds of outrageous behavior on my show. But never, ever have I had on my show an example of someone actually abusing a child. Abuse? No abuse. No abuse. No abuse, Jerry. No abuse. No abuse, sir, Jerry. There are all kinds of abuse, sir. There are all kinds of abuse. I'm not talking sexual abuse. I'm talking abuse that's even worse. You have that child there who is obviously right now very excitable. Oh, very and then excitable. the first words that come out of his mouth, or his mouth Something he could not possibly have known. Because remember, when I asked him, what does Christmas mean? He didn't even know. Uh -huh. But then, when he said, say something, the first thing he says is, kill, kill, kill. Where do you think he learned that? He learned that from you. <laughs> we'll be right back. There's more. Stay with us. What's the point? Tell me. 
What are you trying to preach? Well, you got to have Santa Claus for Christmas. No, well, you do such disrespect to Christianity. It is incredible what you say. You better hope God's forgiving, I'll tell you that. You better I'm hope sure that. He is. What, for AIDS. Is, what, you what? I said praise God for AIDS. It'll get rid of a lot of these porch monkeys. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, you are no comfort to all the white people in America who are currently oh, dying of AIDS. Some, you're talking about the white hair. I say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see. Right, that's now, now, what about you? Uh, let me see. I got something for you, too. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to make it look like Christmas here. Yeah. Hold on Nothing is going to make this look like Christmas. Right. Yeah. Okay, here's the informational part of what we're showing you today. This stuff isn't just taking place on a television show. The reality is it is taking place. It even takes place with young children at the point where they're even baptized to believe this. Take a look at this video. What you have done to that child, you will rot in hell for. Uh, Vince, why did you join? Vince, why, uh, Vince, why did you join? Well, I, I met them out the flea market. They were protesting. <laughs> well, that's the first thing that makes sense. Let's get it straight. They were protesting because. I'll say, I'll call them blacks, okay? Blacks had their little Malcolm X and all their little shirts. Well, rebel flags came out there, and the flea market forbid the Klan from selling their merchandise. So the pr Klan protested. That's, that's where I met them. But as I asked them questions about religion and about politics and different questions, I believed a lot like them. But I never knew I did until I talked to them. And I have the same beliefs as they do. And you are... And you are so proud of what you believe that you cover your face? <laughs> Would you feel more comfortable with it was off? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll make this deal with you. No, I'll make, I'll make, you, I'll make you a deal. Because I don't want you, because you're a young man, and I don't want you to ruin your life. I'm willing to say this to you. If you, are, if you are willing to drop out of the Klan, I'll let you walk off the stage, and no one will ever know that you were here, and you will be converted. an idiot for saying that, but let me tell you something, and I'll let you talk. I promise I'll let you talk. You think I'm crazy for offering you that opportunity, but I am telling you there will come a time in your life 
when you will kick yourself for not taking advantage of that opportunity. I gotta take a break. But that's your choice when we come back. You will either take off you take off the mask or you'll leave the show. I'll give you a choice. It's your choice. You can quit the clan, and no one will ever know what you did. But if you stay on, and I'll let you stay on, you're entitled to say your piece, but you'll show America who you are. You will pay the consequences of your belief. Don't go away. When we return, we'll see our exclusive video of the Secret Christmas celebration with the Ku Klux Klan. Stay with us. know what an idiot he is. Welcome back to Nine Line, the show known far and wide for its broadcasting prowess. Oh. Wait a minute, did you think that was a double entendre? I didn't even think of that. Let's check our early LaFone poll results. Clan Claus is raising his six-year-old son to hate minorities. Do you think that's his right as an American, or do you consider it a form of child abuse? If you think it's his right to teach hate to his son, press 1. If you consider it a form of child abuse, press 2. If you're in 213, 310, or 818 area codes, dial 520-9000. If you're in 714, dial 977-1000. Jerry Springer would be very pleased and proud to see you there when he gets back. And so would your mother. Together, but she doesn't know he's dating Elisa, too. I'll be with Lisa sometime. Oh. So is it still Donna, Trina, and Toya? Oh. I got a little secret to tell you, too. Oh. <laughs> You've been taking care of the next man, baby. That ain't yours. Tomorrow on Springer. Okay, the uh, clan is watching. Um, right. And, and I'm watching them, too. What, what do you want to say to them um, about how they feel towards Jews, towards blacks, towards other Christians? What do you want to say to them? What do you because want to I'm say to them? Because I'm a lot tougher than the Ku Square. They're in more trouble than me if I catch them. They're, they're nervous about to see when I'm coming. I don't come with a sheet and a pillowcase. I don't come with a thumb pair of pants, but I'm very dangerous. I got guns in every pocket. I just can't find my pants. <laughs> Welcome back. As you know, the holidays are here, and it's time when most of us are planning parties with family and friends. Now, our show was recently invited to a very different sort of celebration, a uh, Christmas with a clan. Watch this. It appears to be just an ordinary Christmas celebration in a cozy, middle-class home in a nice neighborhood. There's music and Christmas cookies, presents, and a crowd gathered round to trim the tree. Even Santa stopped by. But wait, this isn't Santa. And these aren't festively dressed party goers. In fact, what the neighbors don't know is that you've been invited to a secret society party. A white Christmas with a Ku Klux Klan. Toward the night before Christmas, and all through the ghettos, the Afros were flashing their brand new stilettos. Then suddenly came flying through the night on his sleigh, old St. Nicholas. Could he save the day? He looked those niggers and Jews in their bloodshot eyes and said, Hey there, boys, I've brought a surprise. Soon the whole crowd did tremble in fear, for out of his bag a cross did appear. He pulled off his cap, and there on his head, that dreaded white peak sat there instead. He spoke aloud with pride and no fear. Your traitors have had it. The Klan is now here. No Klan Christmas party would be complete without these adorable little hooded Klansmen gingerbread cookies. Over here, we've got a beautiful clan blood drop patch cake from the exalted Cyclops of Okeechobee, Florida. You've heard of Girl Scout cookies. What we've got here is KKK cookies. Much better, I might add. No Christmas parties complete without little swastika cookies. Gingerbread swastikas for those that like gingerbread. A clan Christmas cake made by Vince from Lakeland. A chocolate swastika 
with chocolate frosting from the Imperial Nighthawk. And of course, we don't want to leave out Jerry. We got Jerry here. Merry Christmas to Jerry from Clanta Claus, a bottle of Mogan David Concord wine. Hope you like it. And of course, we're all from the South, so bourbon's our drink. Merry Christmas. Just what I needed. <laughs> you know what you forgot? You should have had an ashtray. And you should have gave it to my and said it's a Jew holder. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, Gary. Out of America. Or St. Lucy, Florida. Florida. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I'm remarkably unimpressed with that. I mean, it's, you know, it's like, I don't, it's so silly. It's, it, it reaches the point of not personally being offensive because it's just so stupid. But the one thing that does anger me is, is the influence you have on children. That's what is scary. I mean, this guy behind the, uh, Vince, I think his name is, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, what, he's probably a teenager or, you know, 19, something like that. You know, this this guy, I'm, I'm giving you that chance again. You have the chance. If you leave now and quit the clan, say you quit the clan and leave, then no one will ever know what you're like. And you have a chance to reform and become a decent human being. But otherwise, you got to take the mad spell. you got to take it on. If I'm giving you a chance to give you a point of view, then you got to be man enough to show who you are to hearing that point of view. Take pull, pull this, pull my hood off? Yeah. I'll pull the whole robe off. I'm not, I don't wear part of my uniform. Okay. You guys now have a combined IQ of three. What's up, Jerry? All right, okay, there's the joke. We see a flag. Now let's see the rest of your face. Come on, be a man. You said, you said pull the hood off. Yeah. You said pull the hood off. I did. I want to see you. Yeah. So I can see your face. You know, be a bit. All right, hold on, hold on. You're, you're selling all this macho stuff. Hey, man, we're proud of... If you're proud of our race, show me your white skin on your face. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I take it back. Cover it up. <laughs> oh, so go away. Our audience will offer its own Christmas gifts to the clan members when we come back. Stay with us. The first thing we gotta do is this is very offensive and we have to get rid of this right here. This is the most Would you allow it? This is what you said. Hi, this is April. And you think it's time to reveal it? If so, call us at 1-800-29-JERRY and tell us about it. I wish all of you a merry white Christmas. And remember this, anytime you see all white lights on these trees and bushes, they are not Christmas lights. They are those evil Hanukkah lights. They are against Christmas. What the Jews are trying to do is to replace Christmas with Hanukkah. So I say... The Jews must be stopped. Okay. It's going to break their heart, but I'm going to continue. Okay, welcome back to the show. As you can tell from the music and the window backdrop we have here, the holiday season is upon us. But you will also notice the holiday tree that our guests have brought with them today. The swastika ornaments, the blood red swastika on top. This is the Christmas tree of the clan. Not a Christmas that many of us have ever witnessed until today. We've already met several clan members on our show, including six-year-old Michael. 
Now, Michael is a little young to express his own views, but what will he be like as a teenager? That's why we brought on our next wow, guest. Man. His name is John. He is 17 and has been in the clan since he was 15 years of age. He's here with his father, Tom. Let's, let's uh, bring him on out now, John and Tom. Hey. Okay, well, John, tell me what it is that's... I believe in the white race. I believe that it should be preserved. And in answer to your question, the Klan is an American tradition. It's one of the oldest traditions now. I got a quiz for the Klansmen. Whichever one of you all can answer this for me, okay? First of all, question number one. What makes you better than me? After that. Answer that. Well, the issue. The issue. You're trying to change the issue. It's, it's, it's no, like I change the issue. Answer my question. Don't change the issue. The question. Let me let you answer the question. Go ahead. Let's talk. It doesn't have anything to do with better, okay? When you go out and put on your little Malcolm X, you get over there, you get to the bar, drink with your fellas and all this bull. You feel that y'all got this black pride. That's your right, okay? It's my right to feel that I'm great and that my race is great, okay? You take dogs, you take a Rockwater and a German Shepherd, they both might be, the German Shepherd might be a good dog for something, the Rockwater or something else, but you don't breed them. You know why? You have a mutt. Well, that's kind of my philosophy. If I have a blonde-haired, blue-eyed old lady, my kids are blonde-haired, blue-eyed, Hitler would be proud of me. There is a different... Okay, with all... All right, let's not get... Okay, shh. All right, no, no. There is a difference. The difference is, it is very understandable that black Americans would band together and say, after all these years, until recently, of not being given the right to vote, of not being given the right to eat in restaurants, to say, or go to the same schools, or live in the same neighborhoods, there is a reason that blacks would get together to form some political power so they could have equal rights in our country. But that makes sense. But as a white American, but as a white American, I have never been told, as a white American, I have never in the history of my of white people in America, we have never been denied the right to vote, the right to go to the schools we wanted to go to, the right to live in whatever neighborhood, the right to be a sit on the Supreme Court. We have been given that right. Jerry, Jerry, there's a lot of white Irish that can remember signs that said help wanted Irish need not apply. Yeah. You know, there were white two names in America, too. But it was never in the law. There have always been bigoted people, I understand that. But it has never been against the law. I'm telling you, the laws of America, the laws of America for many, many years literally pro prohibited blacks from drinking from certain water fountains, staying in hotels, yeah. going to restaurants. That's different. Now, there's something about presence, right? But I've been told that guests in our audience have presence for the Klan. All right, you go first. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Tradition. You know what? Lemmings following each other off cliffs is also a tradition. I hope you're 
able to remain in the Christmas spirit through all of this. Here's our nine lines your voicemail question for this hour. Do you think it's better to tell kids that there's a real Santa Claus, or do you think you should be honest with them and tell them Santa isn't real? Call us at one 800 He's made a confession to his girlfriend, and he's getting rid of the others and blessing us. I say, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Okay. The guy's only 17. Look what that does to you, see? Hey, welcome back. Today we've met several clan members who have shared with us some of their plans for the holidays and the new year. And watching this, I have to say that it seems there is no chance that these people will ever change. But my next guest is someone who has proved that people can change. Now, his name is Johnny Lee Clary. And he is the author of a new book, Boys in the Hoods, One Man's Journey from Hatred to Love. Now, like J.D. here, he was also an imperial wizard in the clan, but he had since turned against the clan. And, uh, J.D., I believe... <laughs> J.D., you have run into him before. Here he is, Johnny Lee Clary. and we have to get rid of this right here. This is the most... actually being just like him. You were in the clan. What made you quit? Well, you know, Jerry, hatred is a sickness. And when I see these people, I realize they're mentally ill. And I used to be that way. And I was, I was sick. And when you see these people, you don't want to hate a sick person. You want to help these sick person get better. You know? That's what it's all about. What made, what made you get better? Well, it was the love of a black man who I called him every name in the book, but yet he reached out to me with love and he showed me how sick I was and showed me that hatred, hatred starts up the Yeah. Hey, what did he beat like? What did you beat like? It's all for porch monkeys. Settle down. There you go. Beat like. Down. Beat like. That's a telling of Santa. Merry Christmas. That's a telling of Santa. Jerry, what? Jerry, what? If attitudes like this, the hatred is a, it, it, you know, you have to be taught to hate. It's a learned response. That's what's scary. scary. And Wait, they're, uh, they're teaching these young children, and well, this is an example. America can follow the example. We need to teach the kids while they're young to overcome prejudice. Is it too late to change them? I, I, don't, I don't think it's too late to change them. So what would you do? To, what would, here's a kid who's 17, 19 years old. I'm not sure exactly what, but some like right? Upper teens. What, you know... His life isn't over yet. He still has a chance. He doesn't believe me now, but he still has a chance. What's going to save him? He's, he's reaching out, trying to belong, but I'll tell you what would save him, and, and that is the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> you see, you see uh, the, the, the Bible tells us, see, these guys claim to be Christians, but the Bible says in Acts 17, 26, from one blood, God made all races. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll be back. There are a lot of questions from the audience. I'm going to give you a chance. When we come back, we'll be right back. We know that there are certain white people who are bigots. 
Those blacks or those Ku Klux Klan's who hate a Jew. What does that mean? That they're making a party that therefore every Jew should get nervous and everybody should go into a panic. The only the question is how many people do they represent? How much are they growing? To what extent are they a menace? And you have to be realistic about this as about so, anything else. Okay, so it's not the hate. Let's assume you saw one girl that's a virgin. Does that mean there's a threat of virginity all over America? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, tonight's nice to see something positive finally on Jerry's show tonight. Johnny Lee made a 180-degree turnaround in his life, and he should be commended for it. Hopefully some of those others will follow his lead. Thanks for hanging around with Nine Line tonight. Let's take a look at how you're voting on our Nine Line with phone poll. Clan Claus is raising his six-year-old son to hate minorities. Do you think that's his right as an American, or do you consider it a form of child abuse? If you think it's his right to teach hate to his son, press 1. If you consider it a form of child abuse, press 2. If you're in 213-310 or 818 area codes, dial 520-9000. If you're in 714, dial 977-1000. We'll show you the final voting results during Mori Povich or My Name's Not Sushi Blowfish Mermaid Second Class. Welcome back. Uh, there are some who have uh, gifts. Yes. That division he talked about that we spread is going to grow wider and stronger because we work with human nature. He works against it. We're going to show how to overcome that division by. You see, Never you guys are of the past. Why don't you? No, we're the future. Why don't you get a life to it? If you're the future, I, you know, oh, Lord. Uh, uh, I think you claim to be a Christian now or something? Why don't you, 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 you start being not a Christian. I, 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 I said it. Did, did, are you claiming to be a Christian? You are starting okay, to be a Christian. If you don't agree with me, that's your opinion. But all these people out here, it's funny that they hate us because they feel we hate somebody else. No, Actually, no, why don't you talk to some of them? If you think hatred is wrong, why don't you talk to You're the one that's showing them hatred by dividing this nation, buddy. This is one nation. Oh, and they're, and they're all full of love. And they're yeah, going yeah, to give me a great. Right. 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 Okay, right. how are, how are you? Not you their feelings are no different than mine. Oh, if no. they're, they're right, right. They, they don't approve of me. Right. I don't really give it. Okay. They don't, I don't, don't care. care. That's what the problem is. You don't care. But I have lots of people that feel like me, and I can I can find people of my own kind. I don't There's have to. There's a lot of There's white people out here that are afraid. There's white people that are afraid right now to say how they feel because of the blacks in here that would jump them outside the damn movie. You know, you know, there's white people out here that don't want their daughter to be in some little crack doing it. Here, the B movies. Go ahead. Shy. Shh. I can't hear. It didn't tell me. What's it? Your child. Shut up. Producer. All right. Your child. This woman wants to talk. He's just trying to tell you like a used car. Johnny. Don't be okay. Shh. I would all like right. a Satan clothes. Satan clothes and all the rest. <laughs> I would like to say to you that when my this black brother, when my you. black brother. Get up in the morning and put on his pants. He put them on just like you, one leg at a time. He's much mad as you, if not more. And I would also like to say to you, if you're not so ignorant or stupid, and realize this is 1996, not 1896. This is to all the Klansmen on stage. If you can read, this is a diary of Anne Frank. As a child, she was more of a woman than any of you all would ever be men. Yes, I just want to say, you all have been sitting up here portraying that you are Christians and God is in everything, but God is love. He's not hate. And what you all are portraying, you all are hypocrites. Uh, okay. You have love in your heart? What's your you gift? love in your heart? Okay. Yes, I do. I ain't heard nothing but a bunch of bull from the audience who's been out there. Ain't nobody stood up. Yeah. Ain't she ain't just said they love you. Go ahead. Jerry. Please, you can't get Jerry, first of all, yes. they sat up there and he said that, um, that they uh, making not a division, that, but you're getting stronger. You fail to realize this lady, this lady, him, and every black face is in here is getting more stronger. You can spread, but we gonna stand as one, regardless of what she says. Stop kidding. Stop kidding. I'm gonna let you know this. I'm gonna let you know this. I like 
giving gifts for Christmas, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't like you, but I'm going to give you something as a token of appreciation. I want you to kiss my ass. <laughs> Jerry show for only $24.95. Call Video Archives at 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. 1-800-FOR-VIDEO for your video tape. For a transcript, send $5 with program name, date, and subject to Burrell's Transcripts. Box 7, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039. Or call 1-800-777-TEXT. Let me first take this opportunity to thank our uh, studio audience. Uh, this was a pretty tough show for uh, most of us to take, and uh, the decorum that was kept uh, was most admirable. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, but the lesson was important, so thank you. Uh, you know, in the world of Christianity, Christmas, the most holy of holidays, calls for the celebration of the birth of a child. And what blasphemy it must be to have people who call themselves Christians poison the holiday by teaching their own child hate and prejudice in total contradiction to what the message of Jesus is all about. Now, though some of our guests today saved their most venomous remarks for blacks as if somehow they are not Christians and Jews, those who they insult most with their dire tribes are white Christians by muddying and distorting the purity of Christmas's message. And the fact that they abuse their own children with their hateful teachings is perhaps the greatest sin of all. Now, admittedly, what we've witnessed today is about as distorted a view of religion as one can get. And yet, perhaps there are lessons here for all of us. I am struck by how easy so many of us call ourselves a particular religion. Oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Jew. Giving little thought to it other than, well, that's what my parents are, and we celebrate certain holidays. Well, what today's guests painfully remind us of is that in God's eyes, we are not defined merely by what we call ourselves or what holidays we choose to celebrate. We are what we are based on how we behave and believe the rest of the year when there are no holidays and nobody's watching but God. Till next time, take care of yourself and each other.